I, I have these three UPSs here and they have one thing in common. All of them do not work. And why? That has to do something with, with this brick, the lead acid battery which is inside this unit. And today we are going to end this drama here and we will put new lithium packs inside of these UPSs. The small lead acid battery is like this here. This is a 12 volt and 4.5 amp hour battery. They do have one problem. They do not hold very long. So this battery here, so after one or two years, this will not function anymore. And then you have to replace it. And replacing this battery costs around $15. But I will show you how we will improve this situation and even save money. So what I have ordered myself is inside this box. This is a kit with some cell holders, screws, a small BMS and four cells. What kind of cells are these exactly? These are four lithium ion phosphate cells. Each of them is advertised around 6000 milliamp hours, which I think is uh, a little bit over exaggerated. Probably they will have somewhere around 5500 milliamp hours capacity, but that is still more than this lead acid battery because it has 4500 milliamp hours. Is there a particular reason why we have to use lithium ion phosphate? Yes, there is. You can replace a lead acid battery, 12 volt lead acid battery only with lithium ion phosphate cells. And the reason for that is the voltage regime of the cells. Four lithium ion phosphate cells in series fit exactly as a replacement for a 12 volt lead acid battery in the voltage regime. If you would use three normal lithium ion batteries which go up to 4.2 volts or four of them, right? Three of them is not enough voltage. So you would actually overcharge the cells and four of them is too much of a voltage. So, so if you discharge those four cells, you would actually undercharge those four cells. So that's why only one way to replace lead acid 12 volt is by using lithium ion phosphate for cells in series. So this is how the UPS is looking from inside. There's four outlets in the back. You have a big transformer for the power going in and then later on out if you have a power outage. Here inside was the battery. And here is the control board. So this control board is set for lead acid. That's why you cannot change anything on voltage settings or whatever. And your new battery must exactly fit for this regulator. And the regulator, as I said, lead acid and lithium ion phosphate, they match inside the voltage regime. This here is the final connection to the battery. So when we now build a replacement battery from those four cells, it will fit here inside this space perfectly. It's kind of the same size. You see, it will be a little bit smaller than the original. It will fit perfectly inside there. And then we just make uh, the same connections male connections and we just plug this in and it will be working already. What do we need to do first? For the BMS, it came like this, just in parts. So this is a 30 amp 4S BMS, very simple for lithium ion phosphate. It has a little bit of balancing capacity. 
but it came like this so the first thing we need to do we need to solder this connector for the balancing where we then later on can connect our balance cables here so let's do that okay, this is done what we need next this came with these uh, battery holders the set they need to be connected into a group of four so we are going to make a square similarly to the lead acid battery same with it here and as I said we have to make a series configuration of this so we are going to have one common minus one common plus the minus are these uh, female terminals plus pole here is uh, the male terminals so if this is our common minus we are going up and then we need to connect to the next cell so we're turning that cell over this one's going down again and it will jump to the next minus so we put turn the, this cell again if we go up plus jump here to the minus and then come out as our common plus so we can put this together like this so you see the configuration two are looking up two are looking down these are m3 screws and we have some washers and nuts. So I have cut a few pieces of wire here. This is 2.5 square millimeter stranded wire. And this will be our this will be our bus bars. We are going to take one of these lugs. Put it inside here and just crimp it. That's already well enough. On the other side, I want to already also include one of the balance leads. So I don't need to take two of those lugs there. Let's take off some insulation here. But here you can see now one issue. It's just a minor thing, right? This is a standard five pin connector and the cables how they come from the factory and if you use this if you plug this in here would be battery minus here would be battery plus and I have the black on the plus I have the red is somewhere in between etc I of course want this to be battery minus should be the most common most minus should be a black cable and the battery plus should be a red one so I'm going to change this it's very easy. You have to lift this plastic part here up. Then you can release that tooth. So a little bit careful, but it's it's working. So I want to be black on the first position and the red one on the last. So I need to change this one here, the orange one. Now we have the correct order. So we're starting B minus with the black one and B plus is then finally our red one. So okay, so I'm starting with B minus, taking black and this one together, put it inside this lock here and crimp it up. This one will be my next one. our first bus bar for in between and the last one 
is the end together with our common plus. The other end, as I said, is now the male connector and we can just plug it in there in the UPS. This is now our full wire harness to connect to this uh, battery. So let's do this. We said we are going to use this as a common minus. So take the washer here, the screw, and put it on here. Okay, so now we have to be careful that we do the right connections. Okay, minus goes to plus. The next one is our yellow and this one will connect to the next cell here. So we're turning this over and this plus here connects to this minus. Okay, so we started common minus, black one next balance lead is the next minus turning this over again and now we connect these two this way so this is minus this is the next plus and we need the next minus to here that one would be our white one Our last connection, which is missing, is connecting this side plus and minus, and it is our last before the common plus. So now our circuit is completed. Okay, so let's check it. Here we have our common minus. We are going down next, plus, minus, going up, plus, minus, going back again, plus, minus, and up. So if we measure the voltage, we of course need to see 12 volts here. Each cell had 3.2 volts before and you see here 13, 12.9 volts, so everything is fine. We are now going to check the individual voltages on our balance connector so to see if we, everything is correct. So the first cell must have the 3.2 is correct, second position 6.4 correct and then next one 9.7 is also correct and the total 12.9. So the connections to the balance leads are correct. So, but now you already noticed, some of you here, of course, the BMS uh, main needs to be uh, in inserted. You, you have to remove this one lock and solder on B minus, and then the P minus will then go to the load there, to the UPS. So let's do that. B minus is now on there and for the other side P minus I already made that one and here there we here we have a hole there we did not have a hole so I separated this a little bit okay so that is P minus I will have to use hot glue to fix this in place. Let's check the function of the BMS now. We have now the balance leads are not connected so the BMS should be shut. Uh, let's check this here between plus minus out. We have 5.7 volts. I don't know if this is because uh, there is no load 
connected to this. Uh, maybe uh, it is not pulled down to zero. So not fully closed, probably the MOSFETs. Let's check what it is showing when we connect those balance leads here. Okay, now we have 12.9. I finished my pack, I tried to connect it to the UPS, but just to find out that it did not engage. The cells came almost empty, they maybe had 10% state of charge. Or and they did not, the BMS actually cut it out. So I have to charge this up a little bit. And you know, who knows my channel, I don't have too much of equipment. So I don't have a bench power supply. The only thing I have is my 12 volt solar panel. And I have connected this now to the pack. And you can see it is taking almost one amp now. Which is great, I will keep this now uh, charging like this, maybe for an hour and then try to uh, connect it inside the UPS uh, if it will start or not. And it didn't take too long, it was just about 20 minutes on the solar panel. Then I took it now to the UPS and the UPS took over. It is now charging the pack with 0.6 amps which is good so I will monitor this and try to charge it up fully and see if uh, balancing and BMS everything working okay before I close everything up and use it okay, charging is done the current is already zero and the charge controller here stopped at 13.5 volts which is perfect because that is around 3.4 volts per cell for lithium ion phosphate that is really a very good range that is it now uh, i put some packaging foam on this side the other side there is the bms and i left the gap there in case that it's getting a little bit hot so let's take this and close it. UPS is connected again, the computer is running. Uh, let's simulate a grid failure. So this is the power of the UPS and let's hope the best. And this is working fine. Usually we have uh, every couple of days we have short uh, power outages like this which take a few seconds because they're switching something on the high voltage and yeah computer everything running and that makes me very happy okay that makes one successfully refurbished UPS these two will have to wait for another day thank you for watching today's video uh, please like comment subscribe and I see you next time.